everybody. Today it's time for another splendid crafting and cocktails. Uh, first things first, the cocktail. I am drinking today a lovely combination of uh, cherry coke and perhaps a little rum. Uh, I think the rum is all gone, so this here is the last of it. Mm. But I will note that it is still morning time uh, here at Splendid, so we're going to limit the amount of rum that does happen in this crafting and cocktails. However, full on, let's go. Let's do this. So today I'm painting shoes. Uh, I've already started with some of the things, but here, let me just show you what I'm talking about. So these are a pair of shoes of mine that I started painting last night, and I had actually long, long time ago painted uh, something on these that I really, really hated. Sorry, my cat has kind of decided that she was going to make a bed out of these shoes, apparently, in the last hours. <clears throat> Uh, so I had painted something completely dreadful on the toes here, and so I decided to paint over that to make these a pair of uh, lovely, these are Tom's Ballet Flats, that I don't know, this burlap, this beige burlap, I can't figure out really what anything to wear with it because it is so, so neutral and so unexciting. And so um, I actually, I've got a little arrow on the side here, and then I just used the... This is the, where the fabric had gone over anyway, if you can see that. And so I just painted over this whole angular toe part here with white. And in absolute uh, okay. assumption that I would paint over it with a different color afterwards because I wanted the white to form a neutral on the background so that if I painted something over it, it would be not blotched up by what was underneath. But I actually kind of totally dig the white. I don't have any white flats right now. Uh, so I might just keep the toes on these white because I, I wore them around the house a little bit last night after I did this and I kind of love it. So uh, they are right, white right now. But the absolute beauty of this is that, uh, say, the night before I'm going to wear something and I'm like, I don't have any shoes that match that. Oh, wait, I have these shoes that are just painted white on the toes and I'll just paint over those toes real quick right here. Uh, so that's kind of... The bonus of painting shoes and painting your own shoes and uh huh. Excuse me, all I had for breakfast was a cupcake. Um, is that, uh, you know, I have the freedom to change things as I see fit. Uh, I painted over a couple pairs of my daughter's shoes a thousand times over for different plays and stuff like that, and the paint is starting to chip off between things, but they last really well for the first time, so. And I will note that I'm not painting those with like a craft paint. Those are, I airbrush those real quick before whatever they have to be. They're just a little pair of heels. So they're silver and now they were black and then they were white and then they were black again and then they were whatever. They're whatever you need. So anyway, paint your shoes, people, is what I'm saying. Okay, so what I'm doing now for you is, uh, I'm not going to do the whole on painting, but I will uh, show you how I set up for things. I have kind of uh changed my process here for you a little bit so that it was a little bit more anybody friendly instead of just me now what i'm painting on these particular shoes which are another pair of toms see some new toms. these are not for me these are somebody who has asked me it's a you know a friend has asked me to paint some shoes for her um <clears throat> uh why toms and because I've just shown you two pairs of Tom's. Tom's uh, Shoes, which has the one for one. If you don't know about Tom's, Tom's is a great little company. They make shoes. These awesome espadrilles are their basic shoes that you will see on a lot of people. Let me show you Tom's is on the back here. Uh, they have this one for one deal where, not a deal, it's not a deal, but you pay for your Tom's and they give a pair of Tom's, or I'm assuming some shoes very similar to these, to children who need shoes, which I think is totally awesome. Uh, they are around, I believe the regular price for the regular canvas Toms is like $49. So you're actually paying for two pairs of shoes, just you can only get one of them. <clears throat> and it's totally awesome. Uh, yeah, it says right here, 
with every pair uh, or with every pair you purchase, Tom's will give a, a pair of new shoes to a child in need, one for one. And then there's all these little needy children on the picture. Oh, uh, and I know that they do also. They have lots of other shoes. They have a whole gamut of much more exciting shoes than these uh, wedges and boots, and that they got botas. And they have. I just saw a new line of bags that, if you buy the bags, they are actually uh, helping women in uh, other countries give birth in much more clean environments to save lives. And I think they're an awesome company. So <laughs> rant about Tom's over, but they started this uh, uh, sales promotion marketing campaign, if you will, uh, some time ago called Style Your Soul and Soul being S-O-L-E, obviously the shoe soul, uh, where you uh, have, you. Uh, it goes either way. You either go to a store and purchase them during, to purchase your Toms during a Style Your Soul event and there are artists there waiting to paint your shoes any way you want to, free, after you pay for the shoes. Uh, and that's totally cool. And then they also encourage people to have their own Style Your Soul events where they all, everybody purchases their own shoes and then goes to somebody's house and then paints their own shoes. I, I've been hired by Toms a couple of times to be an artist at a Style Your Soul event and, uh, they're totally fun. Uh, I don't know what to say. I mean, it's like everybody picks whatever it is they want to have painted on their shoes. So, you know, you get everything from I want a brontosaurus to uh, just throw some graffiti on there. To, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, whatever. Uh, so, so I started painting them on my own. I do not limit myself to Tom's. I'm just saying that that's why we're showing Tom's today. I do almost anything on canvas. Now canvas is the best surface for what I am going to show you, which is painting with a normal craft paint. Uh, and I'm going to show you just, okay, so the, the materials I'll be using today are cheap, 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 cheapity cheap, cheap white craft paint. This is Apple Barrel brand. I do believe this came from Walmart and this lovely paint was probably like two dollar and 88 cents like the it, super super cheap and I will use this much of it uh, so I have about 5,000 bottles of paint like this because it works it does not go anywhere that's this is what I used on here right here and I mean it has like a it's it's it dries a little hard but it's fine I have uh, shoes that I have painted that I've been wearing for years and the paint doesn't crack you can wash like if they get dirty you just scrub right on the paint it doesn't go anywhere to 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 also illustrate this is my apron that I wear and this is all uh, not this purple spot but all these little other spots let me bring in okay see all these other spots that's all craft paint and you want to know what I washed this thing a few thousand times it doesn't go anywhere okay that's my point. You can get them wet and rainy and dirty, throw them in the washing machine if you want. Although Tom's recommends you don't throw them in the washing machine because their their shoes don't really jive with it. But if you have shoes you could throw in the washing machine, you could throw the paint in the washing machine. It's totally fine. It works. And then you haven't invested a whole lot in something that might not work. Plan B, because I'm not so sure that this method, you know, using a paintbrush and the paint will work. I also have these, which are paint pens. These are not oil paint pens that I have used in the past uh, for other projects. These are, excuse me, thank you, Coke and Rum, uh, Uni Pasca, www.pasca.com uh, paint pens. And these are like, let me see, but the, they're, they are very similar in style and everything else as the oil paint pens. Like you have to shake them up and then you have to do the dab, 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 dab to get the paint to come out at the beginning. Uh, so I have this bullet point and then I have this super fine point. You can see there. Okay. Uh, I got these a, few, a while back to paint another pair of Toms because somebody had asked me to do like a writing, like a font script a lot of writing uh, font uh, on them and so it had to be very tiny and I did not know if I was going to be able to accomplish it with a brush. So I bought these and they work really well. Uh, so I have these as backup for this project if I can't make it happen with the paintbrush.
Okay? Okay. <sighs> At some point, I'm actually going to talk about the project that I'm doing. I think now. I think now I should do that. Okay. So, uh, what I am painting on these shoes today is a dandelion uh, design that uh, they provided me with a picture, and I'm just kind of freeballing it from there. Freeballing. Watch out, children. This is adult content. Um, okay. So, let's talk about the materials that I am using. I have what, what you need, what you need to do this. And I will also say, right before I get started, that for me, doing this dandelion that I'm going to do, and I'll show you a little sketch of it, uh, I would typically just freehand it. I would just go in and kind of get started. I'm going to show you a little bit more of a cheater way to do it so that you could, so anybody could do this. Okay, so I got my paper plate that I, you know, am going to put my paint on at some point, and I've got my rag. Now, obviously, you can have a paper towel. I have a rag that I just wash whenever it gets really disgusting uh, so that I can be all good for the environment and stuff. Who needs to use paper towels? Okay, I have my cup of water and my paintbrushes, which uh, by no means is the extent of my paintbrushes because here's the rest of them. Uh, what I am likely to use today is extremely, extremely fine points. So there's one that's a very short fine point, and then I have one over here, or three. Uh, so like, here's some other ones that I haven't gotten wet yet, so they don't look very fine. Can you see them? Yeah, get that wet. There we go. So you can see that fine point. Now the longer ones are very tricky to use, so I wouldn't recommend anybody using those until you're really used to them because you kind of have to get used to uh, how they bend and turn as you're moving. So uh, stick with the short fine points if you're actually going to use the brush, or like I said, check out these. I got these on Amazon, so they shouldn't be too hard to find. Let me show you. Posca, www.posca.com. I'm not sure where I found, why I found these. Like, I'm pretty sure somebody recommended them, but whatever. Okay, I have a compass, uh, which is not a typical compass, but this is one I got at Hobby Lobby, and it is my favorite, and it's the only kind of compass I will ever use. Uh, it's uh, so much easier than those old metal ones that we used at school. Uh, you will need some skizzes and a pencil. Okay, so I'm not gonna show you any of that stuff because I've already kind of gotten my stuff set up. Okay, so here, forget that. I'm not going to move you around just yet. Okay, so here's uh, the sketch of the dandelion that I'm going to be putting onto the shoe. Now this uh, dandelion will be going onto the left shoe. So, uh, so then the dandelion bits will fly away onto the other shoe. Uh, so... I'll show you exactly the placement in a moment, but this is the idea. So, you know, you got all these little dandelion bits and then the little thingies will fly off and then you got the little stem, okay? Okay? Okay, so from this sketch, what I'm going to show you is, this is the geometrical breakdown of that dandelion. See? Oh, right there. Okay, so that's uh, the basis for the stencil that I made. Uh, so. All you got there is uh, you got your your big circle, and then I've got a little circle for the inside of the the dandelion that I am not going to be painting in. You can leave a, an empty space there, and then this is the portion here where there will be no dandelions because some of them have already floated away, as we have discussed. Okay, so this is what I'm looking for, and obviously, whenever you're doing that, you're going to have your compass if you have one like mine and you know pick your your outside line go around and then make sure you mark your inside spot and then also do a very tiny inside circle like that and then once you have you know your inside spot then you just you know use your straight edge to draw a couple of lines to the outside I am sure y'all can handle that okay if you can't then just stop now because I can't you're not gonna make it okay then you take your little scissors and you cut it out okay you're gonna cut out you want everything you want a piece of pie with a little hole you know like okay here here's what you want at the end of it okay okay so I actually had I made two of these you know drew them out and then I cut one out 
whenever I went and I took it and I put it on the shoe, I was like, well, that's kind of gigantic. And so I put it, the one that I cut out down and I drew another line and then I cut it again. So I, what I ended up with was much smaller, but you have to figure out exactly how big you want yours to be, but it's a compass and a piece of pencil and some, <laughs> some paper. So trial and error, you know, keep cutting it out until you get the size you want. This is the size I want. I don't know exactly, let's see. How big is it? It is a diameter of approximately doo, 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 five, a little more than five and a half centimeters. So it's not huge, but if you're, depends on the size of shoes you're doing. Don't be blunt. I mean, come on. Okay. And I will note that I am using cardstock. You could use paper, no problem. Uh, I just keep cardstock around and I find its sturdiness very helpful. Okay. I think that's everything. So you've got the stencil. Now, my favorite cheat in the entire world when I'm painting shoes. Okay, so I'm figuring out that I where I want. So I kind of want the dandelion to be right here on this on this left shoe. And then, you know, the dandelion little fuzzies will float over to this one. So I kind of want him right there. Let's see if I really love it. Maybe a little lower. And I don't want that missing dandelion part to be terribly up and down, like any of those lines to be straight up or straight down, because uh, that makes me nervous. Does that sound right? I mean, it's there's things that are appealing for the eye and things that are not appealing for the eye, and neither of those is a straight up and down. Or maybe I do like the straight up. No. Okay. Okay, so that's where I want him. Okay. Yes. Yes, that's where I want him. All right. So here he is, and I'm just kind of holding him on there. And what my, my next mystery item is, uh, it's chalk mystery item. It's not a mystery item. What am I... Okay, I need to stop. Simmer less rum. Okay. Chalk, white chalk. So white chalk is magical because uh, you can sketch everything you want to onto the shoe and it's not gonna stay there. Uh, you don't wanna go like super heavy and crazy with it because it can be tricky to get it all off whenever we're all done, but you just kind of sketch and place and figure out where you want everything, and uh, then you can paint over top of it if you want to. But whenever the shoe is all completely done, you can, uh, like there's three three things I do to get it off. I tap the shoe like that, because the dust will just kind of keep coming off. And then when everything is, like the paint is solid dry, I will go in with a wet rag and I will wipe it off because you won't mess up the paint and you'll just take the chalk right off. Uh, so. Place everything you want to with chalk. And so here, I'm going to throw you down here so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Let's see. All right. So I've got my stencil there, and I'm just going to kind of chalk around my stencil. <laughs> and you can be as precise as you want to with this. And I am using white chalk, but you don't have to use white chalk. You could use any color chalk you want to, as long as it is not like a, a chalk that is more... This is just plain old blackboard chalk, which is, I'm going to go ahead and say, much harder to come by these days than used to be, because it used to be that there were blackboards. Now everyone's got smart boards. Smart boards making people smarter? I don't think so. I think they're just making less chalk. And I don't love chalk. I kind of actually hate chalk because it dries out my skin and whatnot. Okay. okay, so there's my stencil that just looks like a C. Look at that. Isn't that funny? Uh, so that's where my dandelion is going to be. And let me just show you, you know, illustrate here. So what I will be painting... Oh, that wasn't very good. Doo -doo -doo. So you can sketch the whole thing out on your shoe if you want. I like little wagon spokes. Do, 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 do. Are you convinced yet? Are you convinced that it's a, a... Okay, and there's a little stem that'll come out. 
and then uh, from there, you know, each little line that comes out is going to have two little fly away friends. Do, do, do. You know, the little the guys that catch the breeze. Okay, you see where I'm going now? And then, then there'll be the little guys that are flying away. All right, you kind of get it? Like, that's what's happening here is this, there's a dandelion and then there's gonna be this little, maybe a little one right here. But this is why, you know, the chalk, because I can see everything that's going on here and nothing is permanent yet. Look, I, I don't like this guy. I'm gonna tap, 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 rub him out. And he like completely, almost completely disappeared. I would still need a little bit of dampness to get him completely gone. But you know, you didn't like it, then you just, then you just rub them out, you know, rub them out. Ugh, G-rated. Okay. But anyway, okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so uh, then the next thing I would do is, like, once I'm completely happy with everything that's placed with the chalk, then I'm going to start going in with the paint. Uh, and I'm not going to do that on here because that's going to take forever, and I don't like how I look when I paint. It's like, mm, I'm going to start sticking my tongue out and all sorts of lovely things. But uh, when you pa when you start painting, like, if you're going to use... Blah, blah. <laughs> uh, if you're going to start using this paint... You will probably need two coats of the paint, just forewarned. Anything, almost everything. Whenever you're painting the light on the dark, you're going to need a number of coats. Uh, and it's going to be a little sketchy, you know, so it's going to take a little while for you to, to get used to the painting on the canvas because the canvas is an uneven surface and for a straight line to look straight, it's going to take a while, a couple of coats of a straight line. So you're going to have to have a steady hand and a lot of patience, but it's gonna to look totally awesome at the end. And uh, when I'm completely done with these, I'm gonna see if I can splice some footage together and maybe I'll show you the end result. I don't know how to do that yet, so it would be the first time, but I think I'm gonna try. Uh, or I will just have a whole other video showing you the end result because I would like for you to see uh, the beginning and the end and maybe I'll have some other shoes of mine to show you and I will give you some links to other shoes I have painted um, in case you just decide you don't want to have you don't want to paint your own shoes no matter how easy it is uh, and you want me to paint them for you I can totally make that happen too um, mm. okay so I'm gonna get started you go do whatever it is you want to do and I will be here with my shoes and my paint, and my cocktail. Uh, so thanks for watching. Come back, check out some other videos, subscribe. Uh, it's always splendid here, so why wouldn't you want to come back? I'll see you later. Bye. So everything is all done, and I'm just back here to show you the final result and to let you know that I'm totally out of juice or juice, <laughs> uh, Coke or rum. Uh, I'm totally out. So. Uh, just real quick, I'm going to show you how everything panned out. Okay, so these are the shoes. So I just got done painting them and wiping off the chalk marks with uh, with my rag. And as you can see, they're uh, super adorbs. Uh, oh God, adorbs. I sound like a child. Little infant teenager type people. Okay, so uh, this is how they look. Um... So I did end up using a paintbrush and a paint, and a paint. <laughs> uh, this is the paintbrush I ended up using. Super fine, super awesome. This is one of my babies. Uh, instead of the paint pens, because the paint pens were not going on as opaque as I would have liked, they were kind of... Uh, I did several layers uh, in one line and the line looked more just like a little light blue than it did white and that was not what I wanted. So I went with the paint on the brush, which is old school, and old school is awesome. So it worked. Uh, and uh, as you see here, this, uh, what I did was I used my, the, uh, here it is, <laughs> so I used the stencil to chalk it out. And then I started with painting lines out at 
you know, like, like clock marks, like three o'clock, six o'clock, nine o'clock, whatever. So, you know, so that they were going out at the right angles. And then I would f cut those in half, you know, kind of filling in all of the lines. They don't have to be perfect. It's a dandelion, you know, nature ain't that perfect. So I don't have to be perfect either. So, uh, the sporadic lines and making sure that, you know, doing your line really straight and then kind of easing off at the end to try to get that point, you know, like, picking up the brush quicker, maybe, I don't know. If you try it on a piece of paper or something first, if you don't know what I'm saying, but you want a point at the end for the dandelions because they're pointy at the end. Not like pointy, but they're they're not thick. You know, it's not, you don't want to have like just a solid line. You want to have it a little, you know, like, see that? Like little pointy, uh, excuse me. And then uh, after I had all of my lines filled in, then I went back in and did the little the little two flyaway points, like making uh, Ys, you know, on the ends of them. And then because it wasn't very full on the inside, I went back in and did like little dabby dabby dots, kind of fading out so that it would look a little thicker in here where the seed parts are. Okay, you following? You following? All right. Uh, and then, you know, I did all the little extras flying away, uh, and I'm really happy with it, and I waited until it was dry and then I went back in with my little uh, rag with water on it and re-erased all the chalk and so all the chalk is gone. Uh, it doesn't take a whole long time for that to dry but uh, I have done this a few thousand times so give it a few minutes you know before you go in and start smudging everything and then maybe ruining all the work that you did. So uh, the thing also to remember about the acrylic paint that whenever you're painting it, once it's on the shoes, there's really not a whole lot that's going to get it back off of the shoes. It's a pretty permanent paint. Uh, so if you make a spot on there that you don't want, like you have to instantly get in there and start scratching it out. Like wipe it off, maybe, but I would recommend like almost if it's just a little spot, just let it dry and then uh, take a razor blade to it and just try to pick it off of the fabric because it's it likes to stay. Um, I'm gonna have a little uh, celebratory cupcake for being done with my shoes uh, and I'm gonna try to figure out what else it is that I feel like I need to tell you right now. Let me think. Mm, I think you're gonna wish you wanted to have. You had a cupcake too. Mm -hmm. Isn't that pretty? Miss Kathy made these. Mm -hmm. mm. So, after I'm done painting, excuse me, hold on. Mm. Cupcakes make me happy. Ah, okay. So, The shoes, now that I'm done painting them, are done. I don't have to do any sort of clear coat on top of them, no sort of protector. If somebody wants their toms to actually be waterproof, that's on them. They can, I am sure that there's ways you can spray them and waterproof them and all that good stuff. I don't need to do any of that because the paint is fine. If you were of a mind that you wanted to put something on there, say you wanted some bedazzling, this is what I recommend, this here is a uh, spray glitter. It is the most tacky thing in the entire world, but it's awesome. This is, uh, I believe, silver spray glitter. And it uh, is is a sight to be seen. Let's see if I can. Hmm. Oh, oh, I don't know if you could see the haze of glitter that has just be found me, but you know, oh, see, that was just like a little tiny baby spray and it's like it's like a disco up in here okay oh oh it's everywhere okay so if you uh wanted to bedazzle your shoes that's the stuff to use i'm not sure exactly how many rains you can walk through that that's going to stick around or how much your life is going to be bedazzled because you have glittery shoes in your life uh, maybe if you use that, you want to use a clear coat over top of it just to keep the glitter in instead of everywhere. Um, but, but I do recommend it because, uh, it, for those of us who, who do like a little tacky in our lives, it's, uh, 
it's magical. And they, I, yeah, like I said, I think I said it, but they sell it in gold too, maybe, did I? I don't know. Okay, anyway, so uh, that's all I got for today's uh, Crafting and Cocktails. But uh, subscribe and come back and watch more whenever I come up with other things for you to watch me make. I don't know. Uh, so yeah, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.